at you again. And today, let's go over the New England and Giants game. We're just going to go over the highlights because it's preseason. And let's see how some of these big plays happened. So first play of the game, Giants do a little play action. Uh, as you can tell, 73 is got his shoulders to the left, not square. So I have a feeling someone's going to go through his gap. And yep, like I said, someone went right through his gap because he turned his shoulders, didn't keep his shoulders square. And I have a feeling that that guy is going to get there on a delayed blitz. Nope, it's the other guy that came off of 73. So 73, off the bat, terrible leverage, terrible technique, terrible everything. And lets his man right through. Gets his quarterback killed, really. So that's that. We don't have to keep watching him. We saw him get beat. Like he literally just got beat. Now it looks like a punt here. This can't be good. It's either going to be a block or a return or something. They get the kickoff. We got a returner. Let's see what happens. It's taking forever to get there. They used to calculate hang time. Makes a move. Yeah, he's getting a big return. Look at these guys. It looks like an offensive play, guys. Look at all them bunched up. Nobody in lane responsibilities. They're all on different levels. Look at this. They're making a square. Like they're, They squared up, guys. That's what you don't want to do. You don't want to be in a square. That's what you would play on defense if they come out in like quads. <laughs> so they come out squared up. And now they have lane responsibilities here. But guess what? This guy's too far over here. This guy should have been there. And there should have been another guy here. I, I don't know what they're doing right now. Oh, there he is. He showed up late in the wrong responsibility. And another box. Wow, how about that? Football players not knowing how to play football. You see it all the time. Wide open guy in the middle. He didn't see him, but he goes deep down the side sideline. Wide open. Nice throw. Let's see the technique on this defensive back. He let the guy get on him. He didn't like. He didn't jam him to slow him down or anything. Watch him. He keeps his keeps his hand to his side. Both of them doesn't touch him. Doesn't slow him down. So you just let him run scot free down the field, and you're chasing like that's. Really not how you're taught to play, man. You want to get a jam because initially the off the offense knows where they're going. You don't know where they're going, so you're at a disadvantage. So you need to slow him down to buy yourself time. Otherwise, you're going to get beat. It's the NFL. At any level, you got to get hands-on on man coverage or you're going to get beat. Because it's impossible. It's almost impossible to play man coverage for more than three seconds. It's almost impossible, especially in the NFL. Look at this. No hands on. They expose him again. Now he thinks he's just fast enough to run side by side. Gets beat by three steps. The ball's in the air. Doesn't contest it and just goes for the PLCT. How about that? So now goal line. He's open in the middle. Doesn't see him. He's open at the pylon. Does he see him? He does. But he throws it at the back of the pylon. And it's our buddy, number 33, again, getting beat. Terrible technique. Let's see if he gets hands-on this time, though. No hands-on again. See, guys? No hands-on. You don't slow him down. You don't get him off his line. He's wide open. And they're going to call him for holding him. Because you did it too late. He got hands-on late in the end zone. If you're going to put hands-on, it has to be within five yards. You can't do it at eight yards. They're going to call it on you. So we know that's on him. He pulled him back. Watch. Let's let's expose him again. He grabs him there late. Well past five yards. Pulls him again. And still can't make the play. Held him the entire time. And still can't do anything. So we know 33 is getting cut. I would rather not see him on the field. Because he's going to give us terrible tape. I don't want to see him ever again. Hopefully, uh, they keep attacking him because he's awful. Giants on offense. 15 is wide open. Nice play call. Terrible defense. What did the defense do wrong here? So, you can see tight, tight splits. 
Look at this. Look at how tight these splits are. And then look at how close these linebackers are. So that tells me they're leaving this open and this whole side of the field wide open. So initially, by alignment, they're getting beat. Terrible. This is a terrible play action. And look at this. Guys are still coming up. Like, why? The quarterback is dropping back and passing. Clearly a passing play. And they're still coming up like it's a running play. Allowing this guy to go behind them and catch the ball. Like, what? Is, no. Okay. And then right there, that should be a legal lineman down the field. Because he's literally past the blue line. The ball is thrown and he's blocking someone. Well, he was. And they're not going to call that. So, this play is all bad. Like, the linebackers played wrong. They didn't call a penalty. Now, they leave the guy wide open. Can they make the tackle? Uh, oh, and then he fumbles. How about that? So, we get the trifecta. So, let's look at this. So many things wrong. So, we have terrible alignments. Terrible alignments. Terrible on the play call. You're not supposed to come up this much. He's not handing it off. All right, now back off. But they won't. They keep coming up. Keep coming up. Now they back off. Up oh, and then look at this lineman blocking upfield illegally. You can't do this. But he does it. Blocks him. The ball's released. Still had hands on when the ball's released. All right. That's not called. Now the icing on the cake for the worst play in the world. A fumble. How about that? You couldn't write that in Hollywood. Like I feel like I'm watching a movie right now. I would love to see how this guy fumbled it. Let's see if he just lets go of the ball subtly, guys. Let's see if this is a, a fake fumble. He, he just got punched. Let's see it. He's not really securing it. It's not high and tight. It's really all over the place. Like, literally anybody would be able to punch that out. He's literally leaving it out. Honestly, this elbow should be, like, underneath the ball. So if he does punch at it, it goes nowhere. But he left his elbow up, so all he has to do is punch the ball and it goes right down. That's it. That's literally how you coach that. And he punches it right down. He doesn't double up with both arms. I'm going to say that this fumble was on purpose. Because he's not even trying to protect that at all. Like, not even close. Wait, did it? Wait, how did the Giants get that back? Well, these are highlights, so it's not going to be in sequential order. All right, so now, drop back. They throw a slant, and he throws it off of off of a D lineman's head and floats in the air, and no one can get it. So that tells me that they weren't supposed to get that interception. That means the Giants are probably supposed to score here because how don't you pick this off? One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three in the air for three seconds. You got guys that run four threes out there, and no one can get that? Yeah, I'm not buying that. I'm not buying that for a second, man. There's no way. They just didn't want to pick that off. Even the preseason games are rigged, guys. All right, let's see this. Now he floats it. The fender runs right by the receiver. That's terrible, terrible coverage. Let's watch him off the ball, though. Does he get hands-on? He backs off. No hands-on. But he's on top of him. Now he gets hands-on late. That might be a flag. Ball's in the air. He runs right by him. Oh, my gosh. What just happened? All right. That's fine. I was about to say. Let's go back a little. My computer just malfunctioned on me. So the ball's in the air. He overruns him. You would think that he would plant his foot and stop. But he keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. And then finally comes up and hits him. Like, what are you doing? Like, why wouldn't you come back on that and try to... Let's look at him again. Let's expose him. Watch him... Watch Gilbert get exposed. What is he doing? He was perfect. Look, he's doing perfect right there. Stay like that the whole time. Now you have eyes on the ball. You know where the receiver is. And then look what he does. He turns his shoulders the other way. Luke, now he turns his shoulders the other way. Now he has no idea where the ball is or where his man is. And that's why he overruns him. Like, why would you turn that way? You were doing just fine. See, like, it's so hard to play defensive back in the NFL because guys are so scared. I'm talking terrified of getting beat deep. That's like a defensive back's worst nightmare is getting beat deep.
but he got beat anyway, so why not just fucking do what you were doing? And he turns himself, like, why? He didn't have to do that. He literally screwed himself. Hopefully his coaches are telling him that. And then look at this. Let's see if this gets completed. He does it again. Well, if someone else does it. 37 and 38 both do the same thing. Let's watch. How does this guy get in the quarterback's face? Let's see what happens. Running back hits him. He kind of whiffed. So the running back whiffed. But Mac Jones is able to get this off. Or whoever that is. Brian Hoyer. That's not even Mac Jones. So Brian Hoyer puts the ball up. Knowing that the DB is not going to turn around. Knowing that his receiver is going to play the ball. That's what you do as a quarterback in the NFL. You take advantage of the scared DBs that don't want to turn their heads. Ball's on them. Look at the DB falling down. Like, you're not even in the play. You might as well not even been there. But that basically was pitch and catch. You ran next to him and kept running. You didn't defend anything. He's basically throwing the ball, trying to avoid hitting your body. That's all they're doing at that point. So he gets right in. Let's see if the D lineman fought on this. First of all, look how far backed off this guy is, this guy is, and that guy. They're literally a foot of almost one yard off the ball. So just by alignment, they're going to get beat by the run. You have to be as close to these guys as you possibly can, like these guys. These two guys are right head on. These th two, wait, this guy's head on. This guy, nah, he's a little further back than I'd like. This guy's a yard off. This guy's a yard off. So if they run to the middle or left, you're screwed. Because these guys are going to be able to get lower and right into you. Because they're going to be going forward. Because you don't know if it's run or pass. So you have to stay neutral until you read the play. Which is why you got to be close as possible. As close as possible. So let's see what happens. So the D-line. And they actually get a good push. But the problem is they started so far off the ball. That the yard that they needed. They actually needed to be here. But since they started a yard off, they're here now. So that causes a problem. If they were here, this would cause the running back to bounce it out. But since they aligned so far back, this allows the running back to get that extra yard of space that he needs to get that crease in there. That's what I'm telling you guys. Even one yard makes a huge difference. One yard makes is a difference between stopping a touchdown and letting one in. One inch is a difference between a touchdown and not. People don't realize that. Like, football is a game of yards and inches, man, through and through. Like, it really, really is. If you miss a line, you're going to give up a touchdown. All right, I don't want to keep watching this replay. Let's get to the next play. So, what happens here? Shotgun hikes it. They blitz here right up the middle. Running back wide open. Oh, nice little tackle. Yep, nice tackle. I was going to say, I thought he was going to let him go. He got the tackle. Nice job. Nice job. All right. Giants come in with a little blitz. It was a poor blitz right over the linebacker's head. That was actually a beautiful pass. Look at the DB. Never turns his head. Face guards and just lets him catch it. They're so scared of getting beat, man. I don't see any of these DBs making the cut on either team. Well, the Patriots guys are actually playing a little bit better. Their DBs are actually more active, and they turn their heads and look towards the ball a lot more. I'll definitely say that much. All right. All right. He got out of that, but... Their linemen really let the guys through. Nice catch. Look at this guy not really fighting to get out of that, but somehow does. The guy let it go of his leg. It was either he just let go of it because he was down, or he thought he was down, or he let go of it because he thought his teammates would finish him off, and they just never did. But either way, he shouldn't have let go until you hear a whistle. All right, now Giants. It looks like they're blitzing everyone. Let's see if they back out. They back one guy out, two guys out. So it was a bluff. He floats it up. The DB never turns his head. It's our buddy number 38 again. 
Look at let's watch his technique from the beginning. 38. This time he gets hands on a little bit. He should have actually done it there. If he did it there and kept doing it, it would have helped him so much. But he did it so late. Now look at him. It's our buddy. He doesn't like to turn his head. Look at him. Keeps running. Keeps running. Ball's coming. Literally, if he turns his head, he has an interception. Like, why is he so scared to just turn around and look? You're getting beat anyway, so why not look and see where the ball is so you can at least try to make an attempt? You're getting beat for a touchdown anyway, right? What is that, like the second, third touchdown he's given up? He's not making the cut, number 38. And right now he realizes, yeah, my days in the NFL are numbered. He knows it. Like, you ain't turning around, bud. And that's how that ends, boys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.